Eh? Um, before we get started today, I want to do a little thing called Criddle Picks. And not pictures. This is uh, my picks for 2023. I've had several people uh, come in and say, Hey, Criddle, what was your favorite game for 2023? And all that kind of stuff. And I get to play a lot of games. I'm very fortunate with that. And I get to play tons and tons of games. I probably played 20 or 30 games this last year. Um, most of which I actually finished all the way through. Some of them were not good enough, in my opinion, to finish. So, you know, didn't finish them. Um, but I played a lot of games. And I want to give you my top five games from last year. I know that there's, you know, video game awards and stuff like that. But some people, you know, just want my opinion. And uh, I'm going to give you that. So... We're going to do that first before we start the stream. And coming in at number five is Hogwarts Legacy. I really enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy. I thought it was a fantastic game. Some people, you know, didn't like it. It was kind of buggy for, for a lot of people. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I love the the fantasy world of Harry Potter. And um, you can go in, in all the different secrets that you can find and if you didn't go and look up anything for this game and you just tried to go around and find it yourself it was a lot of fun it was a great adventure there were a few things that i would like to have a little bit more of um the combat seemed kind of bland once you got into it it was like the same thing over and over but it was still fun it was an interesting way um to to make a hog or a harry potter game and i really really enjoyed it so I'm putting that in at number five, which beat out some other games that I thought were really fun. Uh, but we'll talk about those maybe at the end. Uh, number four, I'm going to say The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I loved the way that they did this game. It was basically Breath of the Wild 2. However, I like the building of things like the that was very innovative it was it was awesome i loved being able to see all of that uh, and you can absolutely break the game with some of the things that you can build in that uh, and it changed the way you explore the entire world of hyrule you go out there you know usually you you have to go and find certain things to be able to uh, explore certain areas in this one though you build things you just Whatever it was that you wanted to do, you build it, and then you can explore that area. And I love that it had three layers. I mean, you had the sky layer, the main you know, ground, and then you had the underworld layer. And everything was just, like, very seamless. And it, it was just, it, to me, it was a marvel of engineering of the, the developers and how they did this. So big kudos to Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I highly, highly recommend checking this one out if you have not done that. Coming in at number three is another Nintendo game, uh, and this was probably going to be a surprise to a lot of people, and it was Pikmin 4. Why I love this game is because it was just so enjoyable to play. I had a blast playing this game. In addition, I played it with my son quite a bit. Um, my girlfriend also sat and watched me play it some, and we just had a, a lot of fun playing through the game, doing all the different challenges, um, finding the different Pikmin, and then figuring out how to use those Pikmin to get through things. Like, it was a very cool puzzle game, and I had never played a Pikmin game prior to this. So this was a new experience for me, and I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. I highly recommend getting this game, especially if you're a younger gamer or a more casual gamer. This is a huge game um, last year that I, I do recommend to a lot of people. Uh, coming in at number two is... Probably not going to be a surprise to anyone except for that it is number two and not number one. And that is Baldur's Gate 3. This was a fantastic game. Everyone knows how big Baldur's Gate was when it first came out. Um, the voice acting in this game was phenomenal. The storytelling was, was really, really good. The only thing that fell short in this game, in my opinion, was Act 3 when it first released. Act 1 and 2 were great. And then by Act 3, you're like, oh my gosh, is this going to ever end kind of thing. Um, so that's where that happened, but they have made a lot of updates to that. And now there's a lot of changes, uh, that, that basically make the, the ending, the act three, a lot better. Uh, but this is a fantastic game. Um, I think the combat was a lot of fun for a D and D style game. And I think the dialogue options were great. I did play it as a bard so that I could do as many dialogue options as possible. 
uh, and I, I I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, if you don't like dialogue and you don't like slow paced combat, obviously this is not the game for you. But I found a lot of people that uh, normally don't enjoy that kind of thing enjoyed this game because it was just so good. Uh, and most of that came from the voice acting, the characters, and the way that everybody you know interacted with the world. It was just a really, really good job. Um, and finally, coming in at number one for me was, or is, Mario Wonder. Super Mario Brothers Wonder was an amazing step forward for Nintendo, in my opinion. I, I like Mario games. I've always played Mario games since back in the 80s. You know, I played Mario 1 when it first came out. Um, I, I loved it. And I played it a ton. Uh, but Mario Wonder changed the way that Nintendo looks at Mario. And it changed the way that all of us gamers look at Mario. There, there's a whole new dynamic of how the world can change as you're playing the game. Uh, the different types of uh, things that Mario can turn into. You know, we got rid of things like the Tanuki suit and, um, you know, those kind of things. And we... We have all new stuff that we can do in this Mario game. The challenge at the at the end game with the flower worlds was amazing. I loved that. You don't have to do it. It's all optional content, but it was so much fun. I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope that they take what they did with this Mario Wonder and continue in that direction and making something new. I think Mario, or I think Nintendo, had probably the biggest year last year as far as their games. I mean, I put three uh, of their games in my top five list of games from last year. Um, now, with all of that said, so that, that's my top five list. With all of that said, I do want to, you know, say there's a few games that I played and I enjoyed, uh, but ended up having their, their downfalls. One of them was Diablo 4. I, I enjoyed Diablo 4. It was a lot of fun. But it had too many issues, and it still to this day has too many issues. That's why I'm not going to be playing it today. Um, Honkai Star Rail was also a really, really fun game. I really enjoyed it, uh, but I just couldn't get into it enough for some reason. I, I thought it was it's a great concept, um, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that game. So I do recommend you checking it out, but unfortunately, I just wasn't into it. Final Fantasy 16, in my opinion, fell flat uh, because it was just, they dragged the story out too much. Um, and it really doesn't start to get good until closer to the end of the game. And by that time, a lot of people are getting bored of it. Uh, Lies of P was another one of my top, you know, 10 that I was debating on putting into the top five. Uh, For the King 2 was another one. And then uh, finally, Super Mario RPG Remake. I put that out there because I was like, eh, this is in my top 10. But uh, I, I didn't like it because it was too close to the original. They didn't change enough, in my opinion. They didn't actually update the game and make it more, uh, you know, 2023 rather than, you know, 1998 or whenever it came out, 1997. Well, I don't remember when it came out, a long time ago. Um so they, I feel like they could have done more with that, like they did with the Mario Wonder game. They did so much innovative stuff with that. Uh, so that's why I didn't put those in my top five, but they are still, you know, five of my top games that I did play. There are two games, however, that I did not play, so they're not in the list anywhere, and I do highly recommend them, and I definitely want to check them out, but I can't recommend them fully because I didn't play them, so I can't tell you if they're good or bad or whatever, and that's Alan Wake 2 and Spider-Man 2. Both of those games were... They got great reviews. They they were they were fantastic looking games. I did play Spider Man One and I played Spider Man Miles Morales and I loved those thoroughly. The only thing I didn't like about those two games was I felt like they were a little bit too short. Uh, but the gameplay in them was actually a lot of fun. The you know the dialogue, the story was all a lot of fun. Uh, swinging around New York City was all great. Um, and then Alan Wake Two, I'm. I've heard great things about it. I just didn't have the time to play it. I did play through Alan Wake 1 Remastered, and I've, I loved that game. I had never played Alan Wake before, uh, and I did play through Alan Wake 1. You know, it's an older game, even though it's remastered. They did change a few things here and there, but for what it was, it was a fantastic game, um, and I, I think that Alan Wake 2 is probably just as good, if not better, uh, but I just haven't had a chance to play it. So that's going to be my Criddles picks for 2023. 
hopefully it helped you out if it did please you know like subscribe follow all that fun stuff and uh yeah i'll see you on the next one bye